Buongiorno e benvenuti. Welcome to Art Yoga Pills with me, your host, Dinni. In this space we will connect and share together about creativity, inner child and self-awareness. Siete pronti? Enjoy! Ciao a tutti, chi è ora? And welcome to another episode of Art Yoga Pills. In this episode, I had the pleasure of sharing a lovely conversation with my dear friend, Sonia Lin. Although just after our recording, I realized that the audio from my side was sounding like I was inside of a bottle full of water. So I wish to apologize if the sound is not proper or as usually podcast might be. Although I didn't want to give up to this beautiful opportunity I had to chat with Sonia. Our conversation still remains an amazing possibility for connection and discovery from, of one another. Despite my mistake of using the wrong earphones while I was recording, I hope it will not be too hard for you to understand my words during this time together. I am on a journey of rich and enthusiastic learning experiences to grow stronger and better from each little challenge along my way. I did my best to leave aside any discouragement towards myself, to still give to everyone the space to listen to this episode as raw and authentic as possible. Buon ascolto. Enjoy. Ciao a tutti, che ora and welcome to another episode of Art Yoga Pills. Today I have with me a special person that I really um, honor to have the possibility tonight to interview her, uh, Sonia Lin. Welcome, Sonia. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you. I'm really excited and I know that I'm lashing a little bit from this side of our screen, <laughs> even if people can just hear our voice. Um, I'm really honored that I have this possibility to connect with you. I'm familiar with the parts of your work and I can't wait to know a little bit more about you and share that with, uh, with who is listening today. Um, so would you like to in- introduce yourself a little bit so that not just me is excited to know who you are, but we can extend that to our audience possibly as well. Sure, sure. Um... So I work as a spiritual life and creativity guide. Um, And um, my path, my main path is uh, as a labyrinth facilitator. So I work um, with the labyrinth as, um, the labyrinth is basically an ancient path of meditation and um, a tool for a spiritual journey. and I came across the labyrinth about 20 years ago. So I've been working with it very passionately since then. And um, it's been a huge uh, transformation in my life, as well as uh, the lives of those that have come to it. Um, creativity is uh, a big part of everything that I do. Um, and as a spiritual life guide, um, it's essentially meeting with others, whether one-on-one or in a group, and the process of deep listening to their spiritual journey, um, to see where they're at and see how I can help them connect more closely to the source of the divine in their lives, whatever it may be, and bringing in various creativity um, practices so that they can find that in their lives. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sonia, and I can actually admit that because I've been walking two of your labyrinths so far, and I'm really um, profoundly deep uh, healed by those two experiences. And before we dive a little bit deeper in what a labyrinth is and how it works, I would like to ask you how you came across this. Where was your initial journey through this practice and passion that that fills your heart very much and those who around you also can experience and benefit from it 
Um, so the first time I walked a labyrinth was uh, about 20 years ago. And I was on a retreat with about 18 other women. Uh, I was actually working as a church secretary at the time. Um, so they were all church secretaries. And there was a labyrinth at this retreat. Um, it was a canvas labyrinth. So it was on the floor uh, inside the retreat center. And I had never seen or heard of it before. Um, the lovely woman who facilitated the walk told us just a little bit about it. Um, and then she just really asked us to pay attention to everything that comes up as we walked the labyrinth. And what happened for me in that walk was such a deep transformation in my life. Um, I was at the time... Um, a mom and I worked two part-time jobs. Um, I was a mom of just two young girls. I'm now a mom of three um, with my son as well. But uh, my girls were very young. I was very busy. I uh, basically led each of my days with a to-do list of many, many things and felt uh, very stressed if I didn't check off all the things on my list. I just, I was a, a doer and a goal setter and a constantly on the go. And this labyrinth walk, I saw the women moving so slowly and so meditatively through this journey. And at first I couldn't understand why. I could clearly see where we were supposed to go and found myself really frustrated and impatient as to, you know, why, why wouldn't they just pick up the pace and get, get where we were supposed to go? I missed the whole idea of it being uh, a mindful practice because that was very new to me. And then um, I just remembered what she said about... about noticing what came up for us and it was like this light turned on and I realized that that's how I'm moving through my life is with this constant state of trying to get this done so that I can get to the next thing and it sounds very simple but I just I just listened to that and I slowed down and I got to the center of the labyrinth and I came back out of the labyrinth much more slowly than I went in. And I just felt uh, like I can honestly say in 20 years, nothing has ever um, hit me that hard before as such an awakening. So when I came out and spoke to the woman who brought the labyrinth, um, who just had this knowing smile on her face when I came out and was just like, Oh my God, I, I don't know what just happened in there. And, she just kind of grinned at me like, you know, like I've now grinned at so many other people who have come out and said the same thing. Um, and, and she offered it to me to start to start working with it. You know, it was available to um, to be borrowed. And I just took in as much information as I could with it. And I started working with it and right from the very start started to see how it affected different people as they walked through it and as they brought different intentions to it. And um, I just knew it had, it had to be part of my life and it has been ever since. That's beautiful. I didn't know this about uh, the beginning of your journey so deeply and I'm so moved because I had a similar experience as well. I'm, I'm resonating with the to-do list, uh, even though now I cross off that word and I just put memo, but it still has the same meaning. And it's very powerful when it became my own experience of how slow I had to move and how conscious of my thought I was in that space. And it's kind mm -hmm. of liberating where you can see that it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And I really like that. Um, Mm, that experience was very beautiful and I would like to ask you I know that I already know the answer 
But I wonder if people are questioning the difference between the labyrinth and the, um, oh, I forgot the, the name in English, the maze. Because maze. for us, in, in Italy, for example, we have one name and it defines both. Um, so I'm curious to know, well, um, what's the difference? Because in English, there are these two different definitions that means different things as well. For us, it's just labyrinth. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and that, that's really interesting. So, um, the labyrinth is, the term is used to define a sacred geometry design that only has one path, um, which means the path that takes you into the center is the same path that brings you out again. Uh, whereas a maze is many different paths, many different directions, there's dead ends. It's it's meant to challenge you. You're meant to find your way through it. Um, so the labyrinth really serves as um, just trusting, trusting that that one path is going to take you where you need to go and it's going to bring you back out again and it becomes a real metaphor for our journey through life. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's interesting because there's a lot of labyrinths in Italy um that are known as labyrinths so i i find it fascinating myself that that in italian you know it's it's the word for both um so yeah but the labyrinth is uh it's not meant to challenge you at all it's just meant to be like a sacred container to let the the wisdom and the answers that are already inside of you come forward when you put one foot in front of the other and walk mindfully Thank you. I'm discovering more and more of information that makes sense to me right now. And uh, this kind of reminds me of my first journey. My first journey I bring with me in the labyrinth about my inner child. I just uh, finished a um, one-on-one -on -one session with Alice Young. And so I was very connected with my inner child, which was the person I was holding hand with to go inside of the labyrinth. And uh, based on that, I think I, my next question for you is more related with uh, how is your approach with, uh, with yourself, uh, with your inner child, if you have that spiritual connection that to me is simply the connection with our heart, with our light, with our joyful state and blissful state where there is no judgment, no blame, no guilt. So I wonder how is this resonating with you? And if maybe there is once again a connection for you with uh, with the labyrinth as well. Um, I've been doing a lot of inner child work lately, and I mean, with the labyrinth, anything that you place in the center as an intention, um, the labyrinth speaks to you in that way, and. It's, it can be a really beautiful journey to see your inner child in the center of the labyrinth. Um, and I've done that with, with many walks. Um, or to see the center representing your heart um, or that part of you that needs to be healed or recognized. And then walking towards that with that idea of um, letting go of anything that's standing in your way of of connecting with that that inner child or or your heart yourself, um, and then when you reach the center of the labyrinth, you you can embrace that and receive that and and be with that part of yourself, and then bring it back out with you when you come out. So it's kind of that release, receive, return um, is the threefold path of the labyrinth, and um, it's become a way to really reflect on anything in my life, um, anything that I'm working through, anything that I'm working on, even if it's a creative project, um, thinking about what I need to let go of so that I can receive the, the goal or the dream or the, the outcome, and then how to bring that into reality, how to bring that into my life. Um, and working with my inner child um, most recently unfolded in something 
Um, it was it was a day of creative play that that was not centered around the labyrinth, but more around my love of um, costume design. And I had a, a small group of women come over and, and the whole idea was to just um, embrace that inner child and play dress up like you did when you were a kid. And um, it was because, you know, we have a number of costumes in our home from various uh, festivals and events that we go to. But what happened was these women, um, they really embraced parts of themselves that they needed to bring forward. You know, one woman wanted to embrace, um, you know, that she's moving into the new uh, wise woman stage of life. You know, she's past menopause and she's wanting to embrace that. And when she put the headdress on that, that, you know, really spoke to her and this, this beautiful dress and held a candle. And then, um, you know, my daughter did photos for everyone and just really held them in sacred space. And it, it was, it was such a gift to me, because I just thought it was going to be a, a playful day of dress up. But I mean, women were in tears as they embraced parts of themselves. And, you know, uh, another woman who I know as quite shy and reserved put this, this outfit on and this gorgeous headdress and climbed my tree and just, you know, let her like powerful self shine through in these photos. So um, it's, it's been a real journey through playing with, with that inner child and um, in myself and then being able to offer it to others. So, you know, that's unfolding into more, more of those uh, get togethers and eventually a retreat. Um, but I'm going to pull the wisdom of the labyrinth into that. And again, you know, what, what part of yourself, what part of your inner child or what, aspect of yourself whether it's your wise woman or your inner fairy or you know your your um forest dweller whatever is inside that you want to kind of embody and bring out um then let's do that so um you know and and again what do you need to let go of so that you can connect with that and bring some little aspect of that back into your into your daily life you know so it's the the wisdom of the labyrinth again coming into another creative practice so i'm i'm really excited about that i i had like goosebumps because it's exactly the same feeling of giving yourself permission to do stuff that you normally allow yourself if they allowed you to when you were a child and and then by growing up you start to take away all these uh, moments of joyfulness and empowerment that we can feel even just by wearing a dress and and empower uh, that sensation of having such a beautiful masterpiece of art because it is it is that on your skin and and feel like you're coming from another time another Mm -hmm. uh, space and you are another person but you're just embracing that part of yourself that maybe it's not that simple and that easy to give our self permission to that part to come out so so mm -hmm. beautiful so many different ways there are that we can co truly connect with ourselves and and find what works for us to unlock all these um, limiting beliefs that stop us to achieve our full potential myself included of course <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I'm still on my journey as well but it's wonderful and I wanted to ask you I I, um, I know because I know you that you also apart from the labyrinth you have so many other different passion and interests and sharing that um, you do for yourself with your family and for the community so I don't know if there is anything in particular that you wish to share that I'm not aware of. And I'm really curious to hear everything that you wish to share. <laughs> um, what could I share? Well, I think, I think the passion that I have for the various things that I do, it comes 
from my family. Um, as I said, I've got uh, two daughters and a son. My girls are uh, 20 tomorrow um, and 22. And my son is 15. And I've been with my partner for almost 25 years. And we all resonate very deeply with each other. Um, we all feel like we're from a different time. Uh, we, we resonate very much with, you know, uh, the medieval times, um, the times of, of druids and um, knights in shining armor and, you know, that kind of romantic era. And when we were in Canada, we brought that into a lot of things that we did. We would go to um, medieval festivals, you know, fully dressed in costume. And sometimes we were paid to just be uh, photo, you know, people would come and have their photos taken with us. You know, we were basically paid to photo bomb guests of the festival. Um, and we did that for a, like a Harry Potter kind of magic and wizardry festival one time. And, um, and since coming to New Zealand, there's not as much of that that happens here, but we're still finding ways that we can do it ourselves. So we do attend um, a masquerade ball where we, you know, do full out costuming and get all dressed up. And that's why we have so many costumes and pieces. Um, we love to have uh, family fires. We have a little fire pit in our yard. So we, we follow the cycles of the moon and, you know, a new moon and a full moon, we are very often out around the fire, um, just often writing down intentions and, um, you know, writing down things that maybe we need to let go of and burning them. We've got incense going, sometimes we do some drumming um, and just really take the time to connect in with that that ritual ourselves, um, you know, we celebrate a lot of the Celtic wheel of the year. So as Ostara and Beltane and Samhain and, and just try to really create as many special memories as we can and try to live as mindfully as possible. Um, yeah. And I think because we do that together, that creativity flows into what each of us do on our own. Um, you know, my girls have hosted and still host a lot of the workshops and retreats that I that I lead. You know, um, all three of us are yoga teachers. So sometimes when I'm holding space for the participants, they're actually there holding space for me. Uh, which is really beautiful. It's it's not something that I expect, but it's something that just kind of has evolved through the years, you know, or they'll take on an aspect of the leadership so that I can participate or, um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's really a, a family, a family thing. And I, I really treasure that. Yeah. And I really love that because it's not always easy to find that connection with your family members, especially all as a as a whole group, uh, with no exclusion, which it makes it really profound the um, the type of equality that you can create as um, as a family by believing and supporting each other. Uh, because I don't, I. Um, I don't perceive any devaluation of any members, and it's something that I really appreciate in the, in the connection that we that you have with your family. And I wonder if you have any particular thing that um, it support that connection on an everyday every day to day basis. I don't know if there is something to me, for example, would be a good communication, but I don't know if for you you perceive it also as it goes like. Um, beyond that I don't know um, how to describe it so I hope that you will describe it for me <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's helped us to really be able to communicate deeply with, with one another. Um, right from the very start, we've always treated our, our kids as our best friends, um, which a lot of parents through the years have told us, you, you know, when they were younger, like, you can't do that. You're their, their mother, you're their father, you have to discipline them. Um, but because they are such close friends to each other and to us, we've never had to discipline them. They've, you know, you don't go out and intentionally hurt your friends. You don't do things that you know are going to cause your friends any pain. And I think that's how they've seen it with us. So they, they enjoy being around us um, as parents and um, it's offered us a lot of, of very open communication. Um, we didn't, uh, my husband and I didn't always have open communication in our families growing up. And we really wanted to make sure that we had that with our kids and that they knew that they could always talk to us about anything. Um, so it's, it's really created a very enriched life um, for us. And um, I'm just, I just feel so blessed that they that they enjoy doing the things that we enjoy doing and that they still enjoy doing things with us. You know, most, most kids when they get to this age are just, you know, either rebellious or, or gone or, or whatever, but you know, they still love to sit down and play a board game with us or watch a movie with us or have a fire with us. And um, if any of us wants to bring some kind of new, uh, ceremony or ritual to, you know, our circle, it's, we're, we're curious about that and very welcoming and, um, encourage the exploration of, you know, different forms of spirituality and awareness and, and practices. So it's, uh, it's working. <laughs> yeah. It's a blessing. Thank you for sharing that. I never had the possibility of thinking of this type of relationship between parents and it I really love um, your explanation was really clear and it gave me exactly the same sensation of uh, treating someone especially a child as your best friend because you will never do that um, to your best friend like whatever that is that is against uh, feeling connected and uh, loving of your best friend so i i truly connect with that especially with the relationship that i have with my sister and i'm really glad that to hear that that goes just beyond beyond the fact of being siblings but becoming also a connection with parents that so often is not um easy and thing and uh, i don't know how to say it in english but to give it for grounded basically to give it that ground grounded that relationship and i'm so glad that in your case it is like that and for you it's part of your strength and and the gratitude that you are filled um with when you're when you're thinking about yourself and i guess everything that is related with the with your the joy that i can perceive <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would like to ask you if um anyone would like to connect with you and if you have possibly uh upcoming events that you wish to share with the community for people to get to know you, get to know uh, the labyrinth work that you do. Maybe maybe even ask you question that we might not have touched and also if you wish to share something more that I didn't ask you related with that, just go ahead and um, open up yourself <laughs> sure. with whatever you wish. Um, the best way to connect with me is probably through my website. Um, and my website uh, offers a look into all of the different things that I love to do. Um, and, and the different creative practices that I bring into um, working with others. So that's, that's the best way to learn more and connect with me. Um, I have a, a Facebook page and an Instagram as well. I, I don't love social media, so I'm not the best at, you know, the reels and the stories and keeping it all up 
and whatnot, but um, I, let's see what I have coming up. There's a, a beautiful labyrinth retreat um, at the end of November out in the Coromandel at Temuada. And I'm not leading it, but I am bringing um, one of my special portable labyrinths to that and we'll be speaking about um, that labyrinth, but it is, uh, it's a, it's an absolutely gorgeous place and I'm very excited to be a part of that. Um, I typically do a couple labyrinth walks a month at various locations. Um, I use some of the venues at Kawai Pura Pura in Albany. I also use um, uh, Kanuka Yoga in Hobsonville, uh, which is a beautiful space uh, to put the labyrinth. And um, I just don't have anything booked as of yet, but that will be coming. So anything that I book will be up on the website. And yeah, um, to work with me in the aspect of spiritual life guidance, that can be online or in person. Um, a spiritual life session is uh, really beautiful. Um, I was trained as a spiritual director and it's essentially getting together one-on-one um, -on -one or in a group and it's the sharing of the story and the deep listening, but it's, it's really intentional. We light a candle to symbolize that spirit is with us and the person shares their, their journey with me, their spiritual journey. And then I help them um, to connect deeper with that based on who they are. You know, maybe it's meditation that they need. Um, I've taught meditation for 20 years, so I can, I can help them decide what style of meditation works for them, whether it's, you know, guided meditation or walking meditation or, you know, just sitting quietly because different people resonate with different styles. Um, perhaps it's uh, yoga practice. Um, I work uh, a lot with um, collage and dream collages. Uh, I just finished teaching a five week course called Discovery Journaling, where we did different journaling and art practices each week based on a different emotion. So we worked through um, grief and forgiveness and authenticity and happiness. And that was just such a beautiful um, group of people that came to my home studio to do that. Um, yeah, so it's, it's just kind of, you know, reach out to me and see how we we can create something together and and how that resonates because i'm i'm always making something or creating something or you know learning about something and just i'm just inspired to share it um i feel like there's so many people in the world that are so stressed and anxious as i used to be um and and just disconnected from some sense of the spirit and I am just you know I can go to sleep well at night knowing that I've touched at least one person in the day um, and and give them some kind of inspiration to live a more peaceful satisfied life yeah Thank you so much, Sonia. And um, for sure, we will put in the description of all the links for the podcast, your link so that they, everyone who is listening can follow you, contact you and uh, keep updated through all your channels from the website to social media. So thank you so much for sharing about that and all the other offerings as well. Um, so grateful to hear that there are so many ways that we can heal and not necessarily one path. It might be for everyone, but there are so many different paths that for sure one might resonate with us. And thank you so much for sharing. I, I'm really yeah. curious for the next, for the next journaling course, I would love to book myself in. <laughs> I was running my course as well at the same time, but it's something mm -hmm. that I feel also for my own practice that sometimes I need to let other people facilitating for me so that I can fully enjoy, as you were mentioning before. And it's yeah. something that I'm 
really looking forward to. And just before we close the session, I have my last request for you. Um, if you would share with us three empowering messages that you would like to dedicate to yourself and eventually even to me and to everybody else who is listening in this moment, but mm -hmm. starting from yourself and no matter how big or small they are. Okay, three empowering messages. Um, I think the first one would be to just embrace the present moment. Um, we have, we have learned so much about that since coming to New Zealand. Um, it was a very beautiful journey, but, you know, we have no future laid out for us or planned we've got some ideas of what we'd like to do and we're really good at manifesting but you can really get wrapped up in how is it going to happen and then worrying about how it's going to happen um and yeah just embracing the present moment and realizing that i mean stress and anxiety can't exist in the present moment they come from future future concerns and worries and sadness, grief and regret live in the past. So all you can do is is embrace now, um, which has been a, a huge teaching for me and I'm so grateful for that. Um, another message is I think to just, just really strive to be your authentic self um, understand who you are, learn how to love your own company, um, not when you're, you know, showing yourself on social media or presenting yourself to new people, but to just be who you are. Um, and so much of the journey through the labyrinth has helped me to to learn that and embrace that. But I mean, I can honestly say that it wasn't until I was 40 that I learned to let go of the opinions of other people. And it was one of the most liberating things I ever did. Um, and the third one is, I think just love and openness and trust in each other and, um, you you get what you give and if you put it out there it's going to come back to you and i've and i've seen that happen um we've been so blessed to meet so many beautiful people in new zealand and most of them are not from new zealand hardly any of them like they're they're world travelers and i mean in canada we we knew canadians but here, I mean, we have hosted so many different people in our home. I think one night we had a little beach gathering and then they came back to our house and we had 10 different countries in our home, in these people. Um, and I just, I just love that. I love, I love the connections that um, being open has has brought to us so yeah sorry that was long <laughs> that was beautiful because I took it only in I said there was a message for me as well and I hope that everybody else who listened felt empowered by that because I, I surely did and it was beautiful and I connect, I connect with all of them all of them equally and it's so beautiful and I connect especially with the last one because I kind of feel the same way. Of course, I'm also not a native New Zealander, mm -hmm. as you can tell from my accent, but I really resonate with that. The power of connection of when we open our heart to possibilities, to the unknown and to love, starting from ourselves. So I truly resonate with everything and I ah, I feel uh, <laughs> empowered <laughs> and I hope that um is is the same connection that you might feel with yourself as well and as well for everybody who might uh, listen to this and i'm so grateful for this opportunity 
Would you like to share anything else before we leave this space? Oh, just my gratitude that you reached out um, to talk to me about this. I, yeah, I feel honored to be a part of this. And um, I'm super proud of you for taking this pathway and, and creating a podcast. And I'm excited to see uh, where it goes. So yeah, thank you for, for uh, including me in this part of your journey. Thank you so much, Sonia. I feel that doing this, as we were sharing before, the the recording button was on. It's quite challenging for me to be in on screen, but being on screen with you, uh, with your company, and just flow and ask you a question that I always wanted to ask you and get to know you. It's been so cool, and I'm so grateful that you give yourself a bit of time and energy to to share yourself with me tonight because it gives me of course, a uh, deeper understanding of these tons of way of connecting with each other, but even with a, with a different purpose, such as this new journey that I embraced. And I will see as well. I'm curious to see where I where it's going. But thank you so much. Um, and uh, yeah, for everybody who is listening, thank you for being with us. I hope you will be inspired by what we've been sharing and if you wish to connect with Sonia everything will be under the description of this podcast and enjoy the rest of your day thank you grazie per averci fatto compagnia we hope you enjoyed your time with us if you wish to stay updated and connected visit us on our social media channels and our website www.artyoga.com Ci sentiamo presto. Ciao!